Today's words of wisdom, World Vegan World Peace, a conscious choice, will be presented in English. As an internationally renowned spiritual teacher, humanitarian, poet, and artist, Supreme Master Ching Hai has also been an advocate for peace and the environment, as well as an animal lover. Caring deeply for the earth and all its inhabitants, Supreme Master Ching Hai has been urgently raising awareness on the stark reality of climate change, with a steadfast determination to preserve our beautiful planet. Tirelessly accepting numerous invitations to conferences, media interviews, and other events, Supreme Master Ching Hai has helped to clarify and prioritize the vegan solution for humankind grounded in both extensive scientific research as well as profound inner spiritual knowledge. Supreme Master Ching Hai also sends a message of encouragement for government leaders and citizens throughout the world, which is to act nobly for the survival and happiness of all beings, now and for generations to come. Stemming from the vision of a peaceful and loving world for the future, World Vegan World Peace, a conscious choice, was a special conference that was broadcast live globally on Supreme Master Television, featuring an insightful interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai by the Honorable Frank Avila, Vegan Commissioner of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago in the United States of America. Joining the discussion were the Honorable Patricia Horton, Commissioner of the same distinguished government agency, and Ms. Sherry Avila, a vegan teacher and docent for the Loyola University Museum of Art and for the Irish American Heritage Center. Setting aside precious time from her full schedule, guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai, candidly shared her thoughts on ways toward world peace and restoring nature's balance. We now invite you to listen to the rebroadcast of the live conference entitled World Vegan World Peace, a Conscious Choice at the University of Chicago, Illinois, USA on Thursday, August 11, 2011 with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have as our special guest Supreme Master Ching Hai joining us today via video link. Hello, Master, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Hello. Hello, and thank you. And how are you today? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> and how are you? How's everyone there? Well, we're having a good time here because we're having wonderful weather here in Chicago. Wow, good for you. <laughs> yeah, God has blessed us today. Good for you. <laughs> Supreme Master Ching Hai, it is an honor and a pleasure to meet you. I am most appreciative and honored. It's my honor, sir, my honor. <laughs> thank you very much. I sincerely thank you for accepting our invitation to interview you regarding your poetry book, The Love of Centuries, and other issues concerning our planet. I was also privileged to receive a copy of From Crisis to Peace and Celestial Art. Thank you so much for sharing these books with the world. Before we start the interview session, it would be wonderful if you could share with us some of your insights and wisdom. You're too kind, <laughs> too kind. Thank you, sir, thank you, and thank you, uh, you and Commissioner uh, Horton and your beautiful wife, Sherry. <laughs> thank you all of you as well involved in this uh, beautiful conference. You're very kind, may God bless you. So much, so much. Uh, yes, uh, when I read your book and when I met your disciples uh, speaking about love and peace, you know, I love God and I love my wife and I love my kids, but I love you also because you, you are concerned. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the way you, you're concerned about the kids, the kids are gonna save our planet. 
And that's why we have to educate them on how to save the planet. Yeah. Thank you for doing all you're doing. And uh, my warmest greetings to, to you, uh, Commissioner Horton, your wife, and everyone there. I'm very happy to have a chance to participate in this conference Thank you. today and uh, to be in the presence of such distinguished and caring people like yourself, Commissioner Frank Avila, Commissioner Patricia Horton, and Mrs. Sherilyn Avila, your beautiful wife, and so uh, sweet, <laughs> as well as all the concerned participants attending this discussion. Uh, first of all, my respect for your hard work and high moral principles that guide your endeavors and at the same time have shaped this great nation of America. You have each reached out and touched many lives in your own capacity. Commissioner Avila and Commissioner Horton have served millions of people through the internationally admired uh, water reclamation district of Greater Chicago is a long, <laughs> long title. <laughs> it's not long enough for your merit, actually. <laughs> you have done all to make sure that people have safe and clean drinking water uh, while improving the environment in which uh, they live. The people of Cook County are fortunate to have your dedicated guardianship and selfless spirit of service. And Mrs. Sherry Avila, in your diverse community roles, you have enriched the wholesome learning for many people. All your actions speak volumes of the genuine love and compassion flowing in your heart. You are make a lovely couple. <laughs> Knowing that we all care for people and the environment, we still may wonder about the best way to preserve it for our children and grandchildren, as you care so much about the future generation. Fortunately, we have people like you, whose work offers an example of benevolence and noble values. We also have the teachings of sages past and present to remind us that being kind and virtues are important, not only because this is right or pleasing to heaven, but because loving kindness and virtuous living protect us and our world. The wider we extend our circle of loving kindness, the wider we will be, the wider we will have the shield of protective positive energy around us. So uh, imagine this circle extending to encompassing all creation, including the whole planetary environment and all the living beings within it. Such a shield would protect us from any negativity or harm, be it climate change, disasters, war, economic depression, etc., etc. Being vegan, a world that in today's world means to live without exploiting the lesser beings, lesser co-inhabitant animals. It's the most pervasive way to expand this circle of peace. Veganism is just the modern term for an ancient practice that matches the teachings of ancient prophets like Master Jesus Christ, Prophet Muhammad, Lao Tzu, the Buddha, Socrates, etc. All these great teachers spoke the way of peace and walked the way of veganism, the way of love for all beings. If we don't walk the way of loving kindness, we will widen the sphere of non-peace, of violence. We can see the evidence of this in the animal farms and the slaughterhouses, where there is no inch of peace for our innocent and aware animal co-inhabitants. 
Not only that, there's no peace for the countless wild animals who lose their habitats uh, to the land that is cleared for the animal industry every day. Over 80% of the Amazon's increasingly deforested areas have become pasture for livestock, with the rest going mostly to livestock feeding crops. There is also no peace for the millions of people in need who suffer from hunger and thirst, which is only worsened by the massive resources consumed by the livestock industry. There is no peace for the neighbors of factory farms where hydrogen sulfide, ammonia, and bacteria-laden dust can create an unbearable stench and cause health problems that have both trapped people within and driven them away from their homes. There's no peace even for the consumers who are plagued by the rising incidence of meat related diseases. As the vegan Dr. Neil Barnard has pointed out, 4,000 Americans have heart attacks every day due to meat eating. Every day, 4,000 Americans suffer heart attack. Can you imagine? That's heart attack alone, huh? There are other things that we don't mention. There's no peace for the animal industry workers even, whose bleak and hazardous working conditions today remain similar to those of the Chicago Union stockyards meatpacking days a century ago. I guess you have not forgotten. The Human Rights Watch calls meatpacking or slaughtering the most dangerous factory job in America. And in the end, there's no peace even for the few who financially profit from the meat and dairy industry. They must bear the dreadful consequences of their actions. If not in this life, then the hereafter, because God has warned those who harm or kill animals that they should stop all this cruelty. It says so in the Bible. Stop all this cruelty, or he will turn his head away when they pray to him, because their hands are full of the innocent's blood. So. A completely peaceful world must be a vegan world where all beings live in peace and not fear one another. Therefore, I urgently call upon all the caring people to please be vegan and also pray and meditate for world vegan, world peace. This is to protect our planet, our lives and our souls with our positive energy. Please be vegan to manifest peace and health, at least in your circle of life, so that together we can lessen the violence and sorrow and increase happiness and love in our world. And this shall be the kind of tomorrow we could ensure for our children and all beings on the planet. Thank you. My God bless us all. Thank you for those kind remarks. And you know, you mentioned the Chicago stockyards. Well, the effect that the Chicago stockyards had here in Chicago, the area we call it Bubbly Creek. And Bubbly Creek is still is contaminated. The bottom of Bubbly Creek is all toxic. Still? Still oh. in Bubbly Creek. My God. And we had trouble in Bubbly Creek in dissolve oxygen. Because, you know, we as human beings, we need air to breathe. Well, the aquatic life under the water, they need dissolved oxygen to survive also. And it, it is contaminated, and we have to uh, increase dissolved oxygen in, in Bubbly Creek. Oh, gosh. And, and, and also, um, Supreme Master Ching Hai, what we do here in the Chicagoland area, the way we treat wastewater, and we discharge our effluent, our liquid, into our channels. It flows southwest into the Plains River, 
from the Plains River, it flows into the Illinois River. From the Illinois River, it flows into the Mississippi, oh. and it flows down into the Gulf of Mexico. Gosh. So we, the people living here in Chicago, has an environmental effect all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Jeez. Huh. And yes. that's why we have to be considerate about our water environment here in the Chicago great area. Yes, sir. You see, just Chicago alone is like that. Yes. Can we imagine uh, around the world, everywhere, even worse than Chicago, some places? And, and we live in God's country, as I mentioned, because we have wastewater plant to treat our wastewater. Right. So this is God's country. Right. <sighs> we are really harming ourselves by harming the animals. Yes, because uh, God created creatures, and creatures is everyone, including us. We are creatures of God. Right. A cow, cattle, pig, they're creatures of God, and we should all love each other. All right, sir. And again, thank you for taking time from your very busy schedule to be with us and sharing some life-changing information. My pleasure, I sir. I am thrilled that you are here. From just hearing your opening remarks, I see we're in for a special night filled with stimulating, challenging, and inspiring wisdom and truth. So at this time, we are going to start our interview, our question and answer session. I will ask the first question. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce David Maloney is present here, and Vincent is present here also to our conference, World Vegan, World Peace. Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, a Supreme Master, in the Bible, the first sentence says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If one reads through the chapter, it says that God made humans and made them the steward of the earth. Mm -hmm. If God made us the steward of the earth, we have to protect our planet. Right. Supreme Master, how do we protect our planet at this time in 2011? Ah, yes, any time, sir. Not just at this time, but... You're right, we are in a more urgent situation right now. And thanks for your question. I'm very honored to meet such a genuinely noble government leader as yourself, sir. First, I want to say that. You have been recognized many times for your honest, selfless leadership and wholehearted service for your fellow citizens. You even worked extra hard to produce hundreds of television shows with your beloved wife, Miss Sherry, about the environment, health, as well as culture and music on Chicago Access Network TV, uh, one of the country's largest and widely used uh, television networks. This is amazing. Thank you. And the shows can be watched on television and internet as well. You didn't do this for financial gain or for fame. It was out of your pure care and concern for others' health and happiness. I salute you and thank you and congratulate you. Thank you. Thank you. In response to your question, sir, uh, from all info and evidence gathered up to date, we can protect the planet best at this moment by adopting the organic vegan diet, by going green and by doing good deeds, just as you are doing up to now and continue. In addition to instructing humankind to be stewards of the earth, the Bible God also described exactly how we should do this. 
In the first chapter, God said, Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God also said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. In other words, we humans have been given the entire plant kingdom to enjoy as vegans while we care for our animal co-inhabitants peacefully. God say rule over all animals. God did not say eat all the animals. Mark this in the Bible. It's very clear. We should follow the Bible's God's instruction. Yes. That is how to be the stewards who protect and maintain an Eden planet. As this has been true since even before biblical times, the vegan way is more urgently needed now than ever before. Thank you, Commissioner Avila. And by the way, we also thank you for your work to reduce chemical pesticides yes. in your district land. Yes. The way you are always watching out for people and the environment safety is also protecting the planet. We thank you wholeheartedly. Thank you for your answer, and I'm glad that you mentioned toxic chemicals, because that is one of the problems that we're facing today, especially among our kids that are being born. Our kids are being born with diseases that adults have, and our kids are having it right now. Yeah, because chemicals are poison. Yes. In the water and in the environment, they affect their health and their... Uh, formation, even in the fetus already, in the womb already, is a disaster. And, and that's why I love you, because you, you're concerned about the kids. Well, we all do, sir. We all do. I am sure everyone on this planet who are parents, or not even parents, we all love children, and we all concern about children. The question is, what are we going to do for them? Yeah. Love in action. We all want the children to grow up healthy and be happy, not just wanting. Make it happen. Do whatever we can. That's how we love the children, the parents. Parently love. Action. Do something. <laughs> uh, I have the next question, Supreme Master. Please, sir. Please, sir. Your disciples and I have been going out to talk about saving the planet. But in the long term, who will be around to protect our planet? It is our kids, Supreme Master. You are a Supreme Teacher. How does the Supreme Teacher teach the teacher to teach the children so that when they grow up, they already know how to protect our planet? Yes, sir, Commissioner Avila. Actually, all of us have to be teachers we are all supreme teachers. We have the supreme power within us. Our Father, God, is the supreme teacher. We inherit this name. We are the children of God. So we all have to be the supreme teachers on this planet and anywhere else. For the children's sake and uh, for them to learn from us, and for us to learn from the sages of old and new about the ideal lifestyle for humankind so that we can pass it on to our children. We can draw from the exemplary lives of the sages who practiced the compassionate way of life. They never kill or harm animals. They live a vegan lifestyle that protects humans, animals, and the environment. They also taught about the power of being virtuous in saving the planet from any threat of harm. For example, we can talk forever. There are so many examples, but I'm just citing a few. Like Pythagoras, the Greek philosopher, has said, 
For as long as men massacre animals, they will kill each other. Indeed, he who sows the seed of murder and pain cannot reap joy and love. The Russian philosopher Leo Tolstoy commented, It is horrible. Man, without any need for so doing, crushes his lofty feeling of sympathy and mercy for living creatures and does violence to himself that he may be cruel. The first element of moral life is abstinence. He means abstinence from violence, from animal meat. Now, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, also said, Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Buddha advised all his disciples to be vegetarian. So did Mahavira, Guru Nanak, Lao Tzu, Confucius, Jesus Christ, and many more, sir. Very simple, to live a noble life. There are five universal peace principles that is inherent in all religious order of this world. That should be taught by parents and teachers to the children from a young age and all ages. Anytime. Number one, never harm or kill others, but protect and save lives. Number two, never lie, but always tell the truth. Number three, never steal, but give whatever can to the needy. Number four, Never commit sexual misconduct outside your loving partnership with your wife, your husband, your partner, your life partner. But to honor your relationship with loyalty and love and sincerity. Number five, never use intoxicants, including tobacco, alcohol, and addictive drugs, but contemplate on the holy God quality. You see, children are naturally pure and can easily adopt such concepts from an early age. In Vietnam, we have a saying that if you want to teach, then you teach the children since young age. All school curricula must therefore include these uplifting moral values. Yes. Values about living a life of loving kindness of a noble human standard. Loving kindness to all around us. Then it will reflect back to us. Then we'll be happy and we will have true peace. Meanwhile, we can teach the children by being an example ourselves of loving kindness. Like what you're doing. You are the example for your children. An example speaks more than a thousand volumes of words. Thank you, Commissioner Avila, for your vegan example as well. Earth-loving viewers, we appreciate your company for today's episode of Words of Wisdom. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. We are here in Los Angeles. For today's celebration, a global event. A global event, yeah. that's right. This musical is going to be absolutely fantastic. You bet it is. So now, everybody, get ready for one incredible journey around the world to 16 countries, all on one stage.